The works of composer Robert Schumann's range from the orchestral to chamber works, intimate pieces and art songs. The three parts of Fantasy Stuker, Opus 73, were written in just a few days in 1849, originally for clarinet and piano. But Schumann also indicated that the clarinet part could be performed on the viola or the cello. Pianist Cherry Zeng and saxophonist Chemi Cheng are here with another take on the well-known piece. And joining me online virtually is Chemi Cheng and Cherry Zeng. Welcome Hello. to the works. So uh, for the upcoming concert, I believe uh, you guys have chosen to play Robert Schumann's Fantasy Stuker. Um, perhaps you can tell, start by telling us about this piece. What's so special about this piece? So we choose the piece because of a recital that's coming up. We have to come up with a program with a theme um, healing because a lot of stuff happened to Hong Kong and the rest of the world in the past year or past two years. So it's nice to have a program of music that's healing to the audience. And we, uh, Schumann is one of the pieces because, and I chose it because it's very lyrical and I love playing the baritone saxophone. I love playing transcriptions on the baritone saxophone romantic lyric transcription. It's so lyrical, it's so um, romantic and expressive. I think it's nice for the audience to hear it. Yeah, and, uh, and I've played the Schumann in uh, several occasions with mm -hmm. other instruments uh, like cello and uh, clarinet. Um, so this time Chemi's playing it on baritone saxophone and I find it uh, very interesting and I would really love to collaborate yeah and let's talk a bit about the uh this dual sort of setting the piano and the saxophone is the repertoire for this uh, these two instruments quite large or was it hard to select pieces that you had to transcribe and so on it's it's very large if you're talking about um alto saxophone soprano saxophone um for my favorite saxophone baritone saxophone is a little bit different because it's not really a solo instrument mm. at least not yet so a lot of the repertoire of it is tran is transcribed and yeah. we'll, we'll so um we have sorry we have collaborated before uh, on a duo recital in fringe club and uh, we chose the franc sonata originally for violin or, or cello yeah or, or flute and it, when it's on baritone saxophone it's also working very well mm. Well, I wanted to ask you, I mean, for those who are not so familiar, you mentioned you had to transcribe it for the saxophone, because especially this piece, Fantasy Stuka, was originally written for piano and other instruments. Did you have any challenges transcribing it for the saxophone? Basically, what I did is to type out the cello part on the computer and then um, let the computer do the key change and the clef change. But the, I feel like the playing part is quite difficult because for the bulk of the saxophone repertoire, mm. it's not so um, lyrical and romantic. So in terms of interpretation, that's something that we have to get used to. For example, um, a lot of rubato, a lot of vibrato. Yeah, I have to listen to a lot of cello recording to mimic that. Many people associate the saxophone and the piano, or at least I do, with jazz as well. So, and, and I also know Chemi, jazz, is a big part of uh, what you do. What is the relationship for you between classical music and jazz? Um, I first started out as a classical musician, really. And I started playing the jazz saxophone when I studied abroad. So yeah, but now I love both and I do both. And the, the bulk of the saxophone repertoire is heavily influenced by the jazz music. Mm. And Cherry has a huge interest in jazz music as well, so I think that works out pretty well. Yes. <laughs> and would you say that, you know, being classically trained, does that naturally lead to jazz, or is it something totally separate? Is there a connection between the two different genres? Yeah, there's a connection, but also a lot of different um, dif differences. differences. Mm -hmm. um, for example, the articulations, the setup, or uh, Improvisation, improvisation is really new to me, mm. but I learned a lot for from playing jazz, and I think that's applicable to playing classical too. Okay, great. Well, let's talk about this year. I mean, I know things are still sort of improving, but things are still sort of uh, quiet. What plans would you guys like to? Uh, what what plans do you have, and what things would you like to do this coming year? 
Yeah, so our original concert uh, is being postponed and probably to the next season, uh, which is maybe in the fall or maybe maybe next spring even mm. will depend on the situation. And as we mentioned before, uh, before we would like to do a live stream, uh, perhaps also in this setting, uh, some of the Schumann and other saxophone repertoire will be uh, great. And uh, I also have some concerts coming up and we have a concert coming up uh, uh, very soon. Uh, with uh, Tom Lee. Uh, so uh, we will play some piano quartets and you play some trio, saxophone so some trios. trios. So finally, for the show, uh, I believe you're going to play one part of the Fantasy Stücker. Tell us about the part that you're going to play for us. So we're going to play the last movement, the third movement of the Fantasy Stück. Yeah, and it's a uh, very uh, passionate and exciting with the middle part, uh, very uh, uh, Dear, dear, dearing, yeah, and loving. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> ¶¶ 